Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio at Sundance. John, Mark, Ferdia, Lucy, Jack. Uh, congratulations on being the day of the premiere of your film. Um, obviously getting towards the end of the day when you're kind of getting all excited. Have you seen it on a big screen? Have you seen the film? I've not seen it. We haven't seen it. John, well, no, John I haven't seen it. Seen it. Yeah, John. I just put it into the editing machine and said, um, process. Pre press process. <laughs> <laughs> John Hughes comedy. <laughs> Took about half an hour. Very cool. Uh, are we witnessing the genesis, pun intended, of, uh, of what made you who you are? Um, um, no, 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 no. I, I cannot listen to Genesis. <laughs> well, it's, beyond my, it's not in my contract to talk about Genesis. Okay. What, what was um, no, I'm definitely a child of the 80s, that's for sure. Yeah. And so when you meet with these guys for the first time, and do you have like a certain playlist? Do you have a lookbook? Do you have like, what did you give them that kind of gave them a glimpse into, into your childhood? Yeah, I gave them a kind of, it was funny, I, I, like I thought that that kind of pretentious 80s sounding need to sing in a British accent was something everybody just knew about. The kind of the like, um, you know that sort of pretentious thing? Oh, yeah. But Ferdia didn't know about it, so he was like, what are you singing like that for? And I said, you know, like David Sylvian or like Japan or like these, and so the stars can shine down. <laughs> so I showed him a bunch of that sort of very, you know, interesting obscure, because he heard lots of 80s stuff, but it was like The Cure and, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we watched a lot of that stuff. We did. We, loved, we watched a lot of mad stuff. Yeah. Some mad dance moves. Because the band at the beginning are a little bit avant-garde and a little bit kind of Gary pretentious. Yeah, yeah, a bit of Gary Newman and... Uh, Stuff like that. Yeah, and Ferdia, for you, um, obviously you've got a background in music, but yeah. did you, were you kind of like up on your kind of 80s stuff? Was that in your repertoire of stuff? No, I was really kind of exposed to it when, when we started shooting Six Street and yeah. kind of uh, John was showing me all the stuff. I wasn't into it at the time, I was actually really into like, uh, I was kind of into like rockabilly stuff and I was playing loads of uh, blues with, with my band and stuff and then. Then I started getting into 80s stuff and then I just became a bit of an 80s head after that. I was just listening to The Cure all the time and the Hall of Notes I got really into. Mm -hmm. Hall of Notes, great band. That's good. Amazing. And uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's definitely expanded my uh, my choice of music. There's my sleep. No, negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moving up. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no. And your audition piece was Blackbird? It was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird you know that. I didn't. I couldn't, I think it was. I mean. Yeah, it was Blackbird. It was Blackbird. <laughs> and so, so, tell me a little bit about that process too, because I know, like, obviously, Mark as well is like your first feature. Um, a lot of the guys, it's their first film. Um, mm -hmm. But that casting process, it must have felt at times like uh, auditions for American Idol or something. But um, was that like really amazing experience seeing all these just talented people come through the door, or was it like arduous? The second, the second thing. Um, it was, it was. Well, I tell you what it was. Actually, was um, it was, it was harder to say no than to say yes. And you know, you know what I mean by that. It was actually very. It was like you, you, you make a film with young people, and it's, it's a, it's a big deal because you're going to be saying no to a lot of people, which is a very hard thing to do. And uh, yeah, you kind of people are people are singing their heart out, and you're like. Trying to let them down gently. It's a very you have to be very careful making a film with kids. I think in it, yeah. um, and indeed even promoting movies. I think as well. Like I want them to enjoy this and just have you know have fun. But it's 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 kind of like to be aware that um, you know making films if you're a kid is like it's, it's a fun experience and it's enjoyable, but it's not the real world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's not the way the real world works. Like and this whole thing of cameras and stuff. That's kind of. That's a sidebar to making a film. Do you know what I mean? But you have to yeah. be sort of careful with it. And likewise with the with the auditioning process, it was sort of like to not discourage people from trying again or from you know <laughs> there were thousands of people came to the auditions. No, you definitely want them to begin again. Oh, oh. Jesus. Wait now, I'm gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots of these, right? Lots uh, of yeah, uh, it's the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, but this is like a cool thing too because here we are at a film festival you get to not have to be in work mode you can actually get to know each other on like a, a different level too so yeah. you, you actually kind of get to experience what it's like just hanging out with each other and, and John's not never again 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and John doesn't have to, have to kind of control the situation or the sound or anything like that. So I guess this is part of the like the enjoyable ride of having these kind of projects happen. Jack, and you know, we met you a couple of years ago when you had what Richard did um, at TIFF, and obviously it's been an interesting journey for you over the last few years. Sure. Um, but to be able to go back to Dublin and shoot uh, a film there again, uh, and uh, to grow that hair out a little bit, uh, must have been a really cool experience, especially because you know, you know, John's got this this whole. Uh, his career also over the last however long as Irish actors and creatives. I'm really glad people creative. think that I grew my hair out for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah. 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 I think it's actually flown, so that's good. Cool. Yeah. 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 That was a great experience. And John and I have been friends for a long time, long before this film. And uh, when we spoke about it, I was just you know, incredibly keen to get on board with it and to, you know, just to have an opportunity to hang out and spend time with John for a couple of months. Wow. That was brilliant, you know? Um, and like you say, it was great to be home with Dublin making a film and, you know, with, with these guys there as well. It, it was kind of like bringing me back to when I was in school as well. And yeah, it was a, it was a kind of like coming home experience for me. So it was brilliant. I loved it. Yeah. And Lucy, as the kind of the muse and the inspiration, uh, in this as well, like what was the first time you met with, with John? Where were you? Did you do it by Skype? Did you sit in a cafe somewhere? Yeah, we Skyped, didn't we? Uh, yeah. I just kept sending him my audition tapes and then eventually he agreed to scare me. Um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, and then that was just for notes for another tape. And then I came to Dublin to audition with a bunch of boys, um, which was so much fun. And that photo when he's still like a child. <laughs> Yeah. So he's changed a lot, is what you Oh saying? my god, so much. Yeah, I was saying, it's so funny watching the film because there are bits that you can see <coughs> that we did in the reshoots. I mean, obviously you can't tell for someone who hasn't seen it, but for me who experienced it, it's like you see Dr. <coughs> in most of the film, and then you see the reshoots bit where he's only transformed into a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no voice. There's the scene. There's the scene. And then comes back down yeah. there's like rosy cheeks. Yeah, this, oh, yeah. but it happens so quickly. There's like this one scene in the movie when Ferdia goes from a boy to a man, and yeah. his voice drops, and he starts to see there, and then goes slowly down. <laughs> <laughs> It was an interesting for you, John, as well, because uh, I imagine Dublin's changed a lot and uh, in that time, and and probably also maybe even hard to get some crews and stuff together if everyone's probably off shooting Game of Thrones or something. That like there's a bit of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were definitely working with a below, yeah. uh, you know, spot on crew. No, 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 they were five thousand. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, we got the drags of the Irish crews. No, they were brilliant in fairness. Yeah, we had yeah. Robbie Flanagan on there, who's oh, unbelievable saying going yeah. what yeah. a yeah. legend and yeah, everybody your own, what a great DP man. Yeah. 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 yeah we, we just were had very lucky with the crew. Absolutely yeah. fantastic team on it. And it was yeah. all really easy and really fluid and yeah. I would come in with my steely down on my speakers yeah. every day. Yeah. <laughs> while everybody was setting up, you know, yeah. and getting things ready and Oh, it was great, crap. Right. Great shoot. Easy yeah. shoot, easy shoot. Like, yeah. Just yeah. Fun, you know? yeah. Did you feel like you were able to, like, you know, send yourself back in time with, like, the places that you shot in Dublin? Did it feel like it hadn't changed? Or... Um, <clears throat> I mean, Dublin really has changed. Yeah. That was that was one of the things I figured out shooting this film, in a sense, was, you know, um, I couldn't get these sort of big, wide shots that I really wanted for certain scenes because just so many buildings got torn down in Dublin in a disgraceful fashion, you know, but like New York and like in the middle of the night, like two Georgian houses would like suddenly just tumble down because these sort of, you know, um, property developers and builders were up to loads of crazy stuff in the 80s and 90s. So a lot of the Dublin that I remember, but basically Dublin was like a Georgian city and in the 80s it was like there was a derelict site or, or like a, 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 like a missing tooth in a smile where a building had just fallen and it was like a car lot. That's what every view of Dublin I remember was like. But now you start to realise like that they've been filled in by with like glass buildings, a lot of modern buildings. So the places that we had to shoot the movie were, you know, we had to be careful that we didn't that we didn't sort of um, expose just how much Dublin has actually changed. Really, as a city. Yeah. You know? And was it exciting too, or freeing in a way that 
like a lot of the music that you got to pull into this was like more soundtrack stuff instead of having to really kind of just create so much like was no we created yeah no but was, I mean like having that like the 80s music as part of the whole project yeah and, like true. totally relying on you to drive the narrative in that sense was that a liberating experience or was that something different yeah you know? I, I think I know what you mean I, I guess um you know, it was, there's a certain amount of sort of nostalgic use of music in the film. And the guy is learning from, Ferdy, Ferdy's character is sort of learning from his elder brother in very much the way that we all learn from our, from our siblings. Um, so he's playing in a lot of, you know, records from, from the late 70s and early 80s. And then the kid is going off and trying to sort of replicate that and learn from it. And, you know, initially he just copies it. And then his brother says, no, this isn't the covers band. Copying is no good. You've got to write your own stuff. So... You know, it's really sort of, uh, it's kind of interesting in a sense of sort of like trying, trying to hear the thing that inspires this kid to write the music. So you hear like, like you know, like a ding, 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 which is a really 80s sort of beat, like in Man Eater by Hall and Oates. And asking our songwriter, Gary Clark, who is a fantastic songwriter, if you could imagine that sort of bass line. Which, which actually that, that kind of time signature was sort of ripping off a sort of, or not ripping off, but homaging a sort of a 50s sort of rockabilly thing. Can you do a song that you could imagine a, like a kid in the 80s who's listening to Hall & Oates, but you don't want it to sound like it's a Hall & Oates ripoff. So it's a really interesting story about authenticity and uh, learning to sort of, you know, not, not just sort of replicate your, your heroes, but to yeah. sort of cherry pick and adapt your own, you know, build your own sound and, and, and create your own sort of music. Very cool. And in terms of, for you guys, like, working <laughs> in a kind of new medium with all these people around you, did it inspire you now to go on and pursue acting over music or other avenues of creative expression? Or you, is this something now that's like the beginning of a new adventure? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, the, we learned so much from them. I mean, I was thrown in, first day I was just thrown in with a table, you know, with you, uh, with Jack, with Maria Doyle Kennedy, Aidan Gillen, and mm. Kelly. Oh, that was Kennedy a great Thornton. day. And yeah. I just like, I mean, we did, was that just one day or two days we did that? Two. That was two days, and I just, that, I just learned so much from those two days. I think we ended up redoing those scenes at the end of the book shoot. Yeah. But we, uh, mm -hmm. It was yeah, really I, just, I just learned, learned so much from them, and yeah, they did. They definitely inspired me, uh, especially working with our scenes, Jack, in, in the in the bedroom. That was great. Um, yeah. And Mark then came to the Mark. I think was a musician, primarily, and came to the auditions. Uh, this is Mark here. To figure out musician to begin with. He was like, he came to the auditions. I've told the story a couple of times, but I'm going to tell it again because I like to see him squirm. Um, <laughs> so he'd come, and I would be like, he'd come in, and, and he'd say. And I'd say, how are you doing? What's your name? Uh, Mark. And I'd say, sorry? And he'd say, uh, my name's Mark. And I'd go, cool, so you're here to the audition for the movie? Uh, yeah, and I'm not really interested in movies very much, I'm a musician. And i go, okay, okay. <laughs> you do realise you've come to, the, to, to, to audition for a part? And he's like, I don't want to be in a film. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, so you're really more about music? And yeah, I'm just totally about music. I, no, no, I, like, I like watching films, but I don't want to be in one. <laughs> and I was like, you're in. Yeah. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to do it. And I said, you're, you've got the part. He's like, I don't want to. Please sure. don't. Please don't. <laughs> I, I actually, I begged. I actually, I, I actually, one day called the John's house and I was like, don't cast me, please. And he was like, no, yeah, you're in this film. <laughs> it's quite weird though, because I'd be, I, uh, I'm not sure if I consider myself a film buff, but I'd be mastered in the films now, and like, very independent films and all that. So, yeah. it kind of made me appreciate film and all that kind of more. As much as I appreciate music, they're quite equal to me now. They're like the only two. Good. You look at them differently, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You look at films totally It's kind of like reading into films now rather than just yeah. sitting down and thinking that was a good film. I kind of like to analyse films more now, but yeah. that's what I taught these kids, you know? Boom! <laughs> 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 Showing them Ingmar Bergman films. Watch yeah. the Ingmar Bergman films. Someone yeah. actually has a script there behind this camera and I'm just kind of like... Cool. Lucy, I'll give you the final word then. What did you learn from Master John? <laughs> um, no, you don't have well, to <laughs> I now have a much better selection on my iTunes. Um, yeah. But also, a lot of the stuff, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of the days were actually more improvised than sticking to the actual script. So that was a huge. Uh, it was very liberating, but it was also kind of totally nerve wracking. But it just, it was just a totally different way to look at it. So it's a totally new approach in the house. 
Berlin. Very cool. Fun. Well, uh, John, maybe if each of you could like, uh, you, if you could, uh, if you could have one still from the film, given that you're the one who's seen it the most, if you mm -hmm. had one still from the film that you'd frame and put up on your wall, yeah, uh, as representative of this experience or a great re memory or just a great image, what would that wow. still be? Thank you. <laughs> that question was actually good enough to end the interview. <laughs> 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 don't even need to answer that. Well, it's it's going to be a weird jump well, in there. It I think it's later. hard to say an image because this image, this image sort of requires sound because it's a, a thing in the film, which is when Ferdy is in his like upstairs in his bedroom in the sort of crow's nest of this like four-story old house. He's up in the attic room. And he's playing the guitar and his parents are rowing downstairs and they're screaming, they're like breaking up in the middle of this massive breakup scene. He's trying to sing and play his guitar. And unfortunately, obviously that's not an image that you can replicate, but in the movie it sort of tells, it, it tells me everything I want to know about the film, which is, you know, music keeps you sane, all this craziness is going on in the life of adults and this world, but you're still, you know, your, your, your guitar helps you through that in your music and, you know, that's what music was to me all the way through my life. It was like any time there was any trouble in school or at home or, you know, family stuff or work or anything, music was sort of came to my kind of rescue, I guess. So that, that's a strong image for me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you all and enjoy tonight. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the journey that this film takes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, guys.